open. Immediately his ears were open and the impediment of his tongue was loose and he spoke plainly. Then he commanded them that they should tell no one. But the more he commanded them, the more widely they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He makes both the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. He has done all things well. He makes both the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. I'd like to continue our thought we began two weeks ago. Last week we shared the celebration of the Feast of Pentecost. And what a tremendous time we had in the presence of the Lord, understanding that Pentecost has ushered us into a new era in the body of Christ. It is an era of amazement and wonder. I want to share with you today in continued thought from the theme Christ's wellness, he does all things well. Christ's wellness, he does all things well. We are in the sixth month, the month of June, of an amazing year, the year 2020, 5780. The year of the open mouth has indeed, for me and many others, been very interesting. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 says, to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. My prayer has been teach me, teach us to understand the times and the seasons we are living in. Teach us your ways that we may walk in your path. I shared on Wednesday evening during our hour of power my awareness and loving concern that many are dealing with thoughts, feelings, and emotions that we have experienced over the events occurring in our country over the past several days. We're not only dealing with the pandemic and all that comes with it, for this COVID-19 has wreaked havoc on life and living globally. We're now faced with the brokenness of equality for all. Racism, injustice, brutality have once again lifted its ugly head from under the sheets of humanity. Each occurrence of this travesty, this brokenness, that makes national media coverage is only a glimpse of that which does not get reported globally or nationally. And for many, it has only fueled the hostility, the rage, and anger many feel. There is a spiritual war that has been heightened. This spiritual war has been heightened to a new level of engagement. The plan of God and what God has indeed declared the enemy is in direct opposition and has positioned himself conversely to attempt the upward, the accelerated, and the advancement of the body of Christ. You see, this is the year of the open mouth that we've declared it all over the world. The year, hey, it is still the year. It is the year of the Lord. But the enemy has tried to silence the voice of the people of God. The church has its greatest strength in unity, yet the enemy's attempt to stop us from gathering and social distancing has come because we're trying to preserve our very lives. But I want to let you know this morning, people of God, beloved of God, the enemy's plan does not work. God is exposing the enemy's plan and tactics. The power of prayer is prevailing and fueling the advancement of the kingdom while prophetic voices are speaking accurately the voice of God to the nations. 
This apostolic prophetic hour is birthing an order of discovery for the church, meaning it is restoring, reinvigorating, and bringing God's original intent. The scriptures teach us in Acts chapter 3, verse 19, that we must repent, therefore, and be converted, that sins may be blotted out, so that the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. And that he may send Jesus Christ, who was preached to you before, whom heaven must receive until the time of restoration of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. The plan of God stands short. The hostility and rage that many individuals feel has a proper place. Now, it may not be expressed properly, but it has its place. The latest nation, nationwide episode of brokenness is the loss of life of George Floyd. I can't breathe is the cry of many. You see, the breath of life is what made a creative being, Adam, become a living, speaking spirit. And when God made man in his image and he breathed the breath of life into him, the breath of life is a God thing. And when you mess with the God thing, it causes chaotic episodes to erupt. When chaos and order collide, something must be birthed out of its intercourse. Maybe it's not just a movement, but an altering of thinking that will usher us into systemic change, a thrust for the kingdom's sake. My brothers and sisters, I pray that you that have an ear to hear in the spirit, hear this prophetic word. We need God. We need to embrace God. We need God's people to share the God that they know. Amen, sir. God's greatest desire is to walk with us, to be with us in a daily, intimate, vibrant relationship. It is in, through, and out of this relationship that we experience personal transformation. And we give the wonderful, we are given the wonderful opportunity to share in the transformation of society. We come to know God as he reveals himself to us. Our response to his prompting, his positioning, and his pursuit of us brings us to new levels of intimacy and awareness of his presence. One of my favorite episodes in the scripture is when Moses is called to come to a deeper level. Yeah. And he's called to move from where he is to a higher place because it is a place that we know in the scripture was a mountain that was ablaze. And so he had to move from where he was to where that which was calling him was. And he went up to the mountain and in the mountain there was a bush that was burning but was not and he saw the bush burning and was not consumed. And of course we know in our reading that God was there. And God made an observation of Moses. And he wanted to know how bad did Moses want to know what was happening? How bad did Moses want to know why the bush was burning? and was not was, was on fire but was not being consumed. And so God waited for Moses complete attention before he decided to speak. When God saw that Moses had turned his attention to the bush, that's when God spoke. Maybe God is waiting for you to turn your attention toward him because he wants to speak to you. 
God wants to speak to you. You see, we are often acquainted, uh, acquainted, excuse me, with the blessings of God, the works of God, the miracles of God. But do we know God? Have we come to know the triune God we serve and to know him in his fullness? Do we know him, the lover, the beloved, and the love? Because when you talk about God, you have to understand that he is God the love, God, God the lover, God the beloved, and God the love. He does not do love. The very essence of him is love. And so he knows how to be the lover, the beloved, and the love. Do we know God like that? And I am convinced that if, as we pursue God, as we turn to God, we come to know him and we come to experience that kind of love. I do believe to, to feel is one thing and to know is another. And what has happened many times with the church is that we feel, but we have not come to the place of knowing. And so we, we, we base our, our, our journey with God on how we feel rather than what we know. We are called to be filled with the fullness of Christ. We must know and experience God through our relationship with Jesus. A relationship based in the grace that he extends to us. A relationship that is so intense that by the power of the Holy Spirit that dwells within it touches all that comes in contact with us. When we are consumed by his spirit. That's what I call Christ's wellness. I, 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 I pray for the body of Christ to be well. Are we well? Are we experience the wholeness and the fullness that Father God so desires us to experience? The text is a very familiar text. Yet the Lord chooses to speak to us as I bring my message to a close. The region of the Decapolis is very interesting because it is where the man who had been possessed by a legion of demons went to proclaim how much Jesus had done for him. In other words, the man who had had legions of now as well and was sent to this region to preach. Jesus comes to the region. <clears throat> While in the region, Jesus encounters a man who was not well. He was deaf and had difficulty speaking. That's an important point. Deaf and had difficulty speaking. Yes, sir. Those who brought the man to Jesus pleaded that Jesus put his hands on him. Another important point. Death and had difficulty speaking. The people who brought it brought him to Jesus pleaded and wanted Jesus to put his hands on him. My early days of education, going way back, y'all, to elementary school, I had a few friends who would periodically be taken out of class for speech therapy. Yes, sir. Speech therapy is the assessment and the treatment of communication problems and speech disorders. Yes, sir. It is performed by speech language pathologists, yes. which are often referred to as speech therapists. Yes, sir. Speech therapists or speech therapy techniques are used to improve communication. These include articulation therapy, language intervention activities, and others depending on the type of speech or language disorder. There are several speech and language disorders that can be treated with speech therapy. I pray you're hearing me in the spirit. Articulation disorders, let's talk about that for a minute. 
And articulation disorder is the inability to properly form certain word sounds. A child with a speech disorder may drop, swap, or distort, or add word sounds. An example of distorting a word would be saying this instead of this. This instead of this. Is the church suffering from articulation disorders? Fluency disorder. A fluency disorder affects the flow of the speech and the rhythm of speech. Stuttering and cluttering are fluency disorders. A person with stuttering has trouble getting out the sound and may have speech that is blocked or interrupted or may repeat part of all of the word. A person with cluttering often speaks very fast and merges words together. Are we suffering from a fluency disorder? Are we stuttering rather than speaking clearly? Wow. Just two more. Receptive disorder. This is a person with receptive language disorder has trouble understanding and processing what others say. This can cause you to seem uninterested when someone is speaking, have trouble following directions, or have limited vocabulary. Other language disorders, autism and hearing loss, and a head injury can lead to a receptive language disorder is the body suffering from the trouble of understanding what's being really said? And then I think the last one I want to look at, but there are many others, uh, two more, is expressive disorders. An expressive language disorder is the difficulty conveying or expressing information. If you have an expressive disorder, you may have trouble forming accurate sentences, such as using incorrect verb tense. It is associated with developmental impairments, such as hearing loss or Down syndrome. It can also result from a head trauma or a medical condition. Is the body of Christ suffering from being expressive? Have we lost our ability to express? One more. Cognitive communication disorder. Difficult communicating because of an injury to the part of the brain that controls your ability to think. Are we suffering in the body Come on, sir. from cognitive, spiritual cognitive communication? Have we been traumatized to the point that we are struggling in our ability to think spiritual thoughts clearly wow, wow. because we have not dealt with our trauma. Wow. All of these disorders, the articulation, the fluency, the receptive, the expressive, and the cognitive are disorders that I believe are plaguing many in the body that's keeping them from being able to declare the word of the Lord. I believe the church need some speech therapy. Before we deal in the text with what they say about the man's speech, we must address the hearing. This is why would you talk about the man's and talk about speech and the man's problem, reason why he possibly could not hear, speak well, is because uh, he couldn't hear. Well, that is probably the problem with the church. Maybe we don't hear, so we don't speak. On, and so the reason why things happen is because we don't hear his voice, so we don't articulate his voice. Come on, sir. The Bible, uh, if you really study the text, it doesn't say that he couldn't speak. It said he couldn't speak plainly. He had a speech impediment. What is the thing that hindered him from being able to speak clearly. What's the thing that may be hindering you from speaking clearly? Can you hear so you can speak? I'm glad that we serve such a powerful God. I'm glad we serve such a great physician who is able to address both of the issues. The text tells us, number one, he leads him away from the multitude. 
Isn't it interesting that there are occasions when God, when, when, when Jesus uh, wants to administer healing, he removes people from the crowd. Listen, maybe you are quarantined, maybe you haven't gone back to work yet, and maybe you are, are, are an extreme extrovert and it's, it's almost killing you to have to stay in. But just maybe God has done this, taking you from the multitude because he wants to speak to you. He wants to do something to pray. Here in the text, it tells us he put his fingers in his ear and he spat and touched his tongue. Touch and spill. Why did he spit? Marcus, why did he touch his tongue? Touch and spill. Jesus spill. And his touch was a part of him. It was a part of the essence of his being. There is so much in our salah. In fact, that's why many of you are wearing masks today. Because you are afraid that somebody's essence of being may be contaminated. And the essence of that being may come upon you. Here, Jesus, you the spit, and his fingers, his hand, the essence of his own life, which is the source of healing, and he imparts it to the man. He looks up to heaven, which is a sign of the agreement with the Father and the Holy Spirit, the triune being comes together and he said, Epona, which means be open. And he commanded the man's ears to be open and his tongue loosened. Immediately the Bible says he could hear and speak plainly. Yes, sir. Listen, he wants to touch you that way. God wants to give you the essence of his being so you can hear. And when you hear, you can speak. It is nothing, no worse than hearing somebody speak what they have really heard. It is obvious that that's not the word of God. And, and, and or that's obvious. Is that what God said? Or is that what you felt? See, remember I said feeling is one thing. And knowing is another. He tells them. Don't tell anyone. In fact, he doesn't just tell them. In the text, he commands them. But you know how our people are. Yes, sir. They can't keep nothing. Yes, sir. And they told it. And the Bible says that they were astonished. They were amazed. Overpoweringly surprised that the man could hear. And that he could speak clearly. And they declare he has done all things well. I want you to know. Jesus does all things Amen. well. Amen. All things well. And whatever you stand in the need of. Christ does all things well. Change is upon us. No matter what. We're in the midst of one of the greatest defining moments in recent global history. And going from one era to the next, God always uses the backdrop of darkness before light appears. Yes, sir. Always. We must hear and we must speak. We must hear clearly and speak without any impediments. We must be open to the Spirit of God to experience His fullness. Christ will. Many of you don't understand what God is saying. Let me help you. He's calling many of us to repent. To reset ourselves. To be recalibrated. To recover and be restored. That we might experience the fullness of this new era. Things are not the same for you anymore. 
You are in a season of newness. And I declare it to you. There's a season that there will be no lack. There will be no frustration. But God releases peace in your life. Yes, I speak to the dead things and command life to come. Yes, I speak to hopelessness and I declare hope to come. In the name of Jesus. We have a new era and time. It is the Lord's favor upon us. It is a time we must seize. Look with great expectation for his imminent return. We must live, my brothers and sisters. This has been my prayer for you all week long. That we live from a posture of wellness. I am well, for he does all things. I am well. For he does all things. You must hear so you can speak. Amos chapter 3 verse 7 says, Surely the sovereign Lord does nothing without revealing his plans to his servants of prophets. The lion has roared. Yeah. Who will not fear? The sovereign Lord has spoken. Who can but prophesy? You can, when you hear, you cannot remain silent. I heard a prophet declare these words, and they rang so strong in my heart. I feel like God wants to make sure you hear the word that was released to the body of Christ at all. It is nothing new to the citizens of Kingdom Life and Future Ministries, for you heard me say much of this. But hear the prophet's words. He said, revival is coming, and the harvest fields of souls are about to bud. Revival and reformation is in the mouth of the church. God says to not allow the mass to muzzle and mute your ability to decree a thing in your life or see it established. As I prepare to go to the seat, I want to pray for you. But before I pray on, there was a verse of a hymn from my childhood. I grew up in a sanctified church that sang hymns and anthems. And one of the hymns from my childhood that stirred me in my prayer time and study and fellowship with the Father in preparation for this morning's message was the hymn, All the Way My Savior Leads Me. I couldn't get away from it. The first stanza is the part that blessed me. The words are, all the way my Savior leads me. Who have I on earth? Who have I to ask beside? Can I doubt his tender mercy? Who through life has been my God? Heavenly peace, divine is comfort. Here by faith in him to dwell. For I know whatever befall me, Jesus doeth all things well. For I know whatever befalls me, Jesus doeth all things well. You see, Christ's wellness is when we experience his fullness. He wants to touch our lives. He wants to touch us with the essence of his being. He wants to heal us, that we can declare by his transforming presence to all that we come in contact Jesus does all things man. Jesus does all things man. Let me pray for you. Father, I pray for every individual under the sound of my voice that you would touch them. Lord, that they may hear clearly and that they will speak clearly. That they will not have communicative disorders rising and rising up in them. But they'll hear you. 